We changed the game last year. Shout out to our CPA, Miss Business. Um, we did a dope episode, and she, she spoke about, uh, you know, the 6,000-pound rule. And uh, after that, that just went viral. Everywhere. Everybody was talking Everywhere. about the 6,000-pound rule and how you can deduct that. So if you're not familiar with the 6,000-pound rule, it was a, a rule put in place. Really, you know, they, they used to call it the SUV rule, mm -hmm. um, where, you know, you can take a deduction if you purchase a, a vehicle over 6,000 pounds, and obviously, you know, vehicles over 6,000 pounds, trucks, SUVs, things of that nature. Yep. So, you know, you're talking about end of the year tax planning, and that's something that, you know, kind of common. But They thought we was just starting with the Rangers. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but we're going we're gonna to bring it full circus with this one because we are utilizing that one again. But this time it's a little different. So just to kind of give you some idea of how the, the 6,000 pound rule works. So vehicles over 6,000 pounds, you can deduct um, up to $25,000 um, in the year that you actually purchase the vehicle. So, you know, you buy a $100,000 car, $100,000 car in cash. Now you can deduct $25,000, but it has to be for business use. That's extremely important. So you could look at that and say, all right, that's only 25,000. Like, you know, what about the other 75,000? So there's a couple different ways how you can get the full 100% uh, deduction. So A, you can finance the car. Mm -hmm. So if you finance the car, you're paying like monthly payments, then uh, you can spread that out. And uh, the deduction carries with you for 24 months. So that's one way to not pay for it all up front, actually finance it which obviously you're paying a lot lower on the monthly side, and then you can, t you can take those deductions over the course of 24 months. Um, but there's exemptions. There's a few exemptions to the rule where you can get 100%. Um, That's what we're here for. Yeah. There's a few <laughs> exemptions to the rule where you can get 100% deduction in the year that you actually purchase this. So one um, is a pickup truck. Um, another is a delivery vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, another one is a shuttle van, which is uh, nine passengers, but behind the driver. Yeah, so, so it's very key that y'all know that it, the driver cannot have access to the road behind them. It has to be separate. Yeah. yeah. So the shuttle van is interesting for us. And this is something that this is what we're going to focus on for this conversation. Yeah. The shuttle by the shuttle van is so interesting for us is that, you know, shout out to Atlanta. Yeah. You know, we spent a lot, a lot of time in Atlanta and shout out to everybody that was at Invest Fest. And, you know, when we was out in Invest Fest and, you know, you got to start to move around a little differently after a certain amount of time. Like, you know, when you reach a certain level where people might know you or you reach a certain level of you got a lot of people that travel with you. Um, Ubers, Uber XLs is not really the best way to go about it. You know, you out at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. It's not really, nah. A, it's not really the safest way to go. And B, it's not really even the most convenient way to go. So we got turned on. Shout out to Just Go. Just Go, what up? Got to give him a plug. That's a fact. <laughs> That's the bro. That's our guy. Yeah. So we got turned on to these Sprinter vans. And we got turned on to these Sprinter vans in Atlanta. And um, it's a really dope way to travel because now you can get like 10 people, depending on how big the Sprinter van is. And people, if they ever seen us move, they know that we have at least seven people with us at all times. There's no XL that's going to pick us up. Yeah. <laughs> so now you can get a bunch of people in these Sprinter vans. And we've been taking these Sprinter vans. We just had one in Art Basel in Miami. Um, I think you had one in, in L.A., right? Yep, we got one in L.A. Um, yep. And every time we go to Atlanta, that's how we move around. It's like, all right. Instead of just buying cars and having them in Atlanta, that's kind of be kind of a waste. And then instead of just renting a bunch of SUVs, we, we don't want to drive. That's what I was saying before too, like we driving cars and stuff like that. That's, that's not really the best way to go about it. We busy, we got to prep for things. Can't just be driving cars in traffic. So now we, we got turned on to these Sprinter vans. So fortunately for us, we had a pretty decent year financially. So we had <laughs> the end of the year and we like, all right, we got to figure out, you know, how to get, you know, some tax deductions, how to save money on taxes. Because it's like, if not, if you just take the money in cash, you want to pay taxes on it. So we come up with the idea of, you know, what if we buy a Sprinter? Yeah. But, and, and so the idea wasn't a new idea because last year we did it when we got our 18 wheeler. Well, that was a different that situation. Was different, yeah, different situation. And obviously we've seen it with the car. So it was like, all right, well, we have the mindset to say, all right, this is another way that we can depreciate our income. All right, let's go this route. You know what I'm saying? So we just, we ain't reinvent the wheel. We just 
added an adjustment to it. Yeah, the 18 wheel is another way to go. Yeah. Um, and we did that last year. So it's like, all right, this year, let's let's invest in a Sprinter van. So the Sprinter van makes sense for us for a few different reasons. A, like I said, we're in Atlanta all the time. So now we actually have a vehicle in Atlanta. Every time that we go to Atlanta, we can, we can move around how we want to move <clears> around. Um, B, if you see what we did with the 18 wheeler, probably the best part of that whole situation is the promo. Like we put, we put EYL University on the side, we put Earn Your Leisure on one side, and we put our emojis on the back. And the 18 wheeler travels all across the country, so now it's become kind of like an urban legend where you, you see it in Mississippi, you see it in Texas, you see it in Oklahoma and California, every, everywhere all over the country, you see the Earn Your Leisure 18 wheeler on the highway, so it's great promotion. It's a moving billboard. So we said, all right, we're going to be in Atlanta a lot. Why don't we buy a Sprinter van where it can give us transportation, but then also we can put our logos on it. Again. It's moving billboard, once again, mm -hmm. in one of our biggest markets. You know, it's something that people see on the road, and it's, oh, Earn Your Leisure, that's a vibe. That's one. Um, our merch is based in Atlanta also. So, you know, as the merch grows, we'll talk about the merch later on. Yeah. As the merch grows, we need transportation for the merch for different events, to get it to the warehouse, to get it from the warehouse, to, you know, all of this different stuff. So it's like, all right, now the Sprinter can actually serve as a transportation for the merch mm -hmm. also. So now you're killing a few birds with one stone. Um, and then we get the bright idea that even when we're not there, we can make an experience and actually rent it out to other people that might need Sprinter vans. And now, you know, we have yeah. built a, a following and have built, you know, loyal support. So people might want to, you know, a good chance. rent out the Earn Your Leisure van when they're in Atlanta as opposed to just a regular sprinter. Yeah, Why mean, not? We, we've heard so much information, right? We sat down with Matty J. He talked about the Turo play. We rent sprinters every time. It was just like, it makes perfect sense and sense, right? Rather than just having a van that can transport us, let's let the people use it. And by the, the time that people rent it, let's say it gets rented two to three times in a month, the van pays for itself. The van definitely pays for itself. And then we get 100% tax deduction mm -hmm. because it's over 6,000 pounds and it's one of those uh, exemptions. Yep. So now we can pay was it like a hundred thousand dollars, something like that? To the foot of van? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't even matter the price. I think we're, the one we're going to do is going to be a little bit over that because we're going to customize it. Well, I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to give a gauge of how much we're going to pay for it. About one hundred fifty. All right, so we pay one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that's a hundred fifty thousand dollar tax deduction because we'll pay for it in cash. So we get a hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's a light stunt. <laughs> I'm just being honest. It's a fact. So you get we get a hundred fifty thousand dollar deduction, right? Save money on mm -hmm. our taxes. We get promo, we get travel when, when we're around, we get uh, transportation for our merch, and we can get some income by renting it out. Now we're providing a service. It's gonna be top of the line. It's gonna be super dope because we're gonna be traveling in it, so we're not gonna compromise the integrity of the van. So now you know you can support a black business and um, ride in luxury in a, in a Sprinter if you wanna go to, you know, prom if you want to if you're in town to go to a falcons game yeah. if you whatever you want to do you know we have a we have a a, a a service now that we can provide for people it's a win-win across the board yeah and then we get the bright idea that hey we're in atlanta a lot but we live here in new york and we move around new york a lot to events and so rather than just getting one why don't we try to get two right and so we have a few businesses that that we run and so we're like all right well let's get one in this business name and let's get one in the other. So in New York, it makes sense from a logistical standpoint. We have a vending machine company, right? We have to supply a lot of uh, food and drinks that go into the business. Rather than put it in somebody's truck or put it in somebody's car, we now have a Sprinter that could transport it back and forth during, for the vending machines. And again, when we move around the city or we move to the airports, we have transportation rather than paying for Ubers, which are like $150 every trip we go to the airport. And y'all know that we travel a lot. So that adds up. In addition to that, now we also have a service. Like when Shadi was talking about, we have a rental service for that Sprinter. Obviously, again, it's going to be top of the line. So it will be available for 
proms and what all these type of events we now have an income source from a van that was really a necessity for us because we had to transport our merchandise in Atlanta and we had to uh, transport our food and beverage in New York. Now it makes sense to have both of them. And again, we're writing off both. Yeah, so, of game. you know, it's one of these things, like I saw a 50 Cent a few years ago, he brought a, um, the Lambo. a Lamborghini yeah. as a uh, tax write-off. I'm not sure how that worked out um, as a business expense, but you know, it's one of these things, you know, everybody's just, you just, whatever's right for you. For us, instead of, you know, buying something that we have personal enjoyment out of, and, you know, we could have did that route, but it's like, I, right, you know, it makes more sense to actually buy something that really has a real business use that can actually make money at the same time and is going to, you know, be good for the entire company, not just like me just buying a Ferrari and Troy just buying a Lamborghini and whatever. You know, that's cool. But, yeah. you know, we felt like reinvesting the money in the business was actually something that would be more practical, more beneficial, and um, something that could actually be more justifiable in the long term. So I say that to say, in your business, um, this is something that, you know, you could take advantage of as well as far as, you know, um, obviously, you know, the 18 wheel of the trucks, that's something that's, very big but you know um pickup trucks are real big too mm -hmm. in the south and things of that nature so you know if you're using it yeah, for business they need to know the, the actual logistics on the pickup truck i think it has to the bed of the pickup truck has to be six feet for it to qualify so there's yeah there's, there's, there's like, like little yeah caveats yeah, you know just you make sure make sure you do your research yeah, on sure. it but but yeah um and you know delivery vehicles if you have a, a business that, you know, you have deliveries and things of that nature. So sometimes people are just buying these stuff without even realizing that they can actually take a deduction. They, just, they don't they, they they don't even benefit from it. So the name of the game is just to learn as much as you possibly can and play the game mo the most efficiently way as possible. So that's what we're here for, just to provide information. And my graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> A mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop.